will be your host for today's session, in which we'll be discussing the technology strategy of the automaker and tech brand. And we'll also be joined shortly by several executives from Mercedes-Benz, as well as special guests from partner companies with which Mercedes has been developing tech to enrich its customers' lives. And that right there, that's the main focus of the day. Specifically, divided into three topics which we'll dive into momentarily. And to close out our talks, we're going to share with you some information about a special partnership which I think will be a lot of fun. So to kick things off, we have with us the Chief Technology Officer of Mercedes-Benz, Marcus Schaefer. Marcus, please join me on stage. Thank you. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for making Thank the time. You, nice to see you. It's uh, good to be back actually. Yes. After three years. Physically, I mean, we work digitally for two years. Professional in that, but you know, seeing people in person uh, can't beat it. Actually, absolutely. There's so much electricity in the air, and so many changes. And speaking of changes, I hear that Mercedes-Benz has some exciting news and developments on how you guys are leveraging technology to create desire. So, tell me more about that. So today it's all about tech and we want to showcase what we were doing the last two years. So we were not resting on our laurels, we were creating electric cars. So now a fleet of eight electric cars are available at Mercedes-Benz and lots of tech and software driven company. That's the approach we're going. But tech serves a purpose and we think it serves a purpose to impact lives of people in a positive way. So make life easier for example, or give back time to people, or create excitement. And these are the three topics actually we want to talk about today. Yeah, I'm really excited to discuss these topics, but let's dive in a little bit to the first one. Giving, making your life easier for its customers, right? So I know that Mercedes-Benz is really focused on the electrification of vehicles, so I would think that you're kind of looking deep into charging, right? Well, we created this uh, amazing electric vehicle, so we have great range, 400 plus miles, real range, quick charging, mm -hmm. but uh, to make real life easier for customers, and you all know when you travel with your EV that sometimes you run into some difficult situations. So what's the answer of Mercedes-Benz? We created a worldwide roaming network of one million charging points across the globe. So that's a major achievement of the company that really makes a life easier, charging easier, no hustle while charging. But still, I believe we can do more. We have a great navigation in the car, mm -hmm. so it tells you the uh, stops and calculates your um, charging stops. So that's all in the car, but we thought maybe we can do even more than that for our customers. Really? Well, it sounds like you have quite an announcement, so I will leave you to it. The stage is yours, Marcus. Thank you, Chilan. Yeah. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we do indeed have an important announcement for today. We at Mercedes-Benz are turning Charchi into a truly desirable experience, not just for our current customers, but also for potential ones as well for those of other brands. So partnering with M8 Energy and ChargePoint, we are setting up a Mercedes-Benz branded charging network to roll out here in North America this year. M8, yeah. Well, M8 Energy is our investment partner with extensive experience in renewable energy, and that's important, renewable energy production and infrastructure projects. ChargePoint is our long-standing partner who we are already hold a stake in and you know a great, great asset in this context. They serve as our backend provider in the US for all charging activities surrounding Mercedes Me Charge. They have a stable software suite that already integrates well into our Mercedes-Benz vehicles and app solutions. What's more, they are a strong hardware provider also in North America, and we see the product here. So we are happy to be able to win ChargePoint for this project, considering their experience in software, hardware, and site host interactions. That's not all. Later on, in cooperation with leading 
industry partners and investors will be setting up additional Mercedes-Benz charging parks in Europe, China and other main markets for Mercedes-Benz. Our long-term goal is around 2,000 charging sites with more than 10,000 high-power chargers worldwide by 2027 already. And that's in addition to other infrastructure projects we are already engaged in, like with the multi-OEM Ionity Alliance that we are running in Europe. So as you can see, we are committed to making the lives of our customers and all EV adopters a little easier. Thank you. Marcus, that is just such impressive news. Thank you so much for that announcement. That was incredible, right? I mean, that's huge. Okay, so I have to ask you, where can we find these incredible charging stations? Because currently, it's very hard to find chargers out there. So with a Mercedes-branded charging network, uh, we give a promise. So it's a promise of a premium charging experience. And that's valid for our sites. So it's not going to be next to a dumpster. <laughs> it's not going to be in the backyard of a supermarket. Right. So we know where we're selling our cars in the U.S. with all our dealers. And we have great partners here. Mm -hmm. They know we're really a dealer. And that's exactly in big mega cities along um, highways, major highways, north to south, east to west in the U.S. That's where people travel. That's where we're going to locate the sites. Okay, so in terms of location, it seems as if you're making these charging hubs as convenient as gas stations, right? But I know that Mercedes-Benz is with luxury, so tell me about the upscale stations that we're going to see. Again, the point, what, what make, what, how makes Mercedes a difference here? So, of course, they are 24-7 open. Uh, they are in a safe spot very important that charging happens even at night at a very safe yes. uh, place so it's light up so there's a lot of light there so there's surveillance cameras uh, and very important so once you stop for charging what would you like to do maybe have some food uh, so next to a food court next to restrooms uh, that's a holistic charging experience that we want to provide and we want to make a difference to what others are doing in the space here. So very much fitting to the brand of Mercedes-Benz. All right, so let me play devil's advocate a little bit. What happens when these charging stations and the charging hubs are all occupied? Well, that's another real life problem that uh, people experience today. So you're arriving at the charging station. Hey, and what? The charging station is occupied. So what's the solution of Mercedes-Benz? You can make a reservation. As Mercedes customer, just put in your destination in the system and your system will calculate your charging stops, right? And you can make a reservation at this charging stop. Mm -hmm. So if the system knows you're arriving in San Francisco at 4 o'clock, just make a reservation for your charging spot. And even if you are delayed during traffic, the uh, schedule is adjusted. So that's really, really uh, a benefit for Mercedes-Benz customers being able to make a reservation at our network. So your network is almost like a charging concierge, if you will. Okay, so let's say that everyone needs to charge at once and there are no reservations. What is someone to do at that point? Well, our navigation system has all the chargers available. It's very unlikely that it's all <laughs> occupied because we will expand the charging sites. So we'll start with 4, 6, 12, 30 chargers. So we will, of course, grow the charging network. It's occupied. The system, the navigation system, will immediately give you an alternative nearby. So you're never going to be without a charge. Okay, Marcus, I was really excited because you did mention a worldwide number, but we're in America. I'm very solipsistic. How about the network here in North America? How big is it going to be? Well, the plan is uh, to look for over 400 sites in America, wow. in North America, and 2,500 charges. So it's, everything is modular, so depending on the utilization, of course, we can expand. And the idea is really to have a high utilization, and that's the goal here. Now, with this goal, I mean, you're making it so easy for everyone to get out there and charge. Is it just for Mercedes-Benz customers? Well, that's the other good point. It's going to be open for everybody. So we really like to push EV adoption uh, 
in the North America, but also worldwide. We think that's the right way to go. That's why we push it as a company. But uh, we want to help also others uh, having the same great experience. So it's open to all other brands and customers as well. I love that you are going to share that incredible high-end charging experience with every EV owner. Okay, so it's no secret Mercedes-Benz is really ro rolling out their EV program quite quickly. So when can all the EV owners, current and future, expect to be charging at these Mercedes-Benz hubs? Well, we don't want to wait, so we are all lined up and we're pushing hard and part of the team is here today. And uh, we want to have the first sites ready this year in 2023 already so that's the promise we give that our customers can already charge this year that's awesome it's happening now that is amazing all right now we all know that being able to charge is going to make your life so much more convenient but there's also another feature that we wanted to talk about that actually takes the strain out of driving so can you elaborate please well, so you have your electric vehicle and you're fully charged, so what else can make your life easier? So imagine you're in cruise control and you're using our level 2 automated system. So uh, now we're adding another feature to our level 2 driver assistance system. It's automatic lane change. So you don't have to worry and just press the turn signal and overtake. The car does it for you. And the good thing is we're going to roll it to all our vehicles uh, with a 24 model year. So you don't have to wait for years. So automatic lane change, next enhancement to our level two driving system will come soon. Wow. Okay. So what is it exactly and how does it work again? It's literally just pressing. Well, uh, yeah, it's quite simple for the customers, and that's very important to us. The user experience has to be intuitive, simple, mm -hmm. and safe. So you're just cruise control, just press the button, you're in cruise control and you're on the interstate and following another car, set, set the speed. But in case there is a slower car in front of you, the car automatically looks at the surroundings with a sensor set and if it's all clear path, the car is changing lane automatically, takes over and the good thing is the original lane. Hold on, so it actually moves a long trip you know from north to south basically you don't have to do anything just setting the speed and here we go for a long long trip so what happens when it's time to exit the freeway that's that's another feature that we have it's not automatic lane change uh -huh. so the car can also follow on the interstate junctions so if you have programmed the destination in the car will even change uh, interstates automatically the driver systems and can follow, uh, move on a ramp as well. So two features uh, that really set us apart and put us in a benchmark situation when it comes to level two driver assistance. So am I hearing this correctly in level two driving assistance? You can literally set in your location. The car will then take over when you have the ALC engaged. It will take over slower vehicles and when it's time to exit, if the navigation is already set, the navigation will lead you to your destination. You don't have to do anything. Exactly. That absolutely makes life so One thing is important, keeping safety always in mind. And safety is the number one priority for Mercedes-Benz. So the driver is still in charge, like in every level two system. The mm -hmm. driver is always in charge. That's very important. So the driver, eyes on the road right. and hands on the steering wheel, like in every level two system that's available in the world. So it's very important. But you don't have to apply torque to our car every uh, so seconds because we have a capacitive steering wheel. Just put your hand on the steering wheel. You don't have to move it. The steering wheel will feel your hand. And that's even another feature that sets us apart from other competitors. That is so impressive and just so exciting. I would like that feature right now. <laughs> so Marcus, um, I love the fact that Mercedes is super focused on ease, convenience, as well as safety for all of its customers. But I'm also very intrigued by how Mercedes is going to give back time to its customers. So how do you plan on doing that? Well, this would be naturally the next uh, step for us when it comes to technology. How do you really give back time so you don't have to monitor anymore? Your eyes don't have to be on the road. And what's the solution to that? That's called level three. So taking the car to a level three mode. Not many in the world have done it to be precise. Uh, only one company has done it so far in Europe. That's Mercedes-Benz with a drive pilot. 
So Mercedes-Benz achieved certification in Germany as the first OEM worldwide to use a level three system. That means that you're legally not anymore uh, in charge of driving, so you can legally perform other duties while we are driving. And that's something we're going to bring and planning to bring to the US. Mm -hmm. And there's good news. We received yesterday from the state of Nevada because we put in our application and got news from DMV out of Nevada that our system was approved in Nevada from the authorities. That is so impressive. Are you kidding me? So, uh, of course, we're starting, we're starting with lower speed here yes. so because this is a really major, major change in responsibility. And Again, first OEM worldwide getting this approval, and the team is very proud, thanks to the team, <laughs> achieving that, yes. Uh, yes, give it to uh, yourself, that's a huge, huge marker, yes. And of course, we will not stop there, so we're starting with a certain speed, mm -hmm. it's helping out in traffic, going to 40 miles, but we constantly work on higher speed. But this is the major change that happens in the auto industry, changing responsibility from the driver, actually, to the product. That is just such an incredible announcement, and I think everyone can be super excited that we actually have that going through in Nevada, and soon it will come to California. So you mentioned the term drive pilot. Some of us may not know what drive pilot is, so if you could explain that to us one more time. Well, uh, drive pilot, of course, is a different car. So it's not the same sensor set as level two. There's really a major improvement when it comes to hardware in the vehicle. So way more sensors, way more radar, camera systems, and a LiDAR system, so the car carries a LiDAR system, of course. It has a wet sensor, it detects wet surface. It has a rear-facing camera. It has uh, microphones detecting emergency vehicles coming from the back. It has a large compute, of course, in the car. And so there are many, many additional features. Redundant steering, that's what you need if you just lay back. You need a redundant steering, redundant brake redundant board net, so there's quite some technology uh, in this vehicle. So uh, I think we're very proud of uh, getting this together. So the hardware and the software working in tandem to bring the safety and the ease to your entire customer base. So it's already on the road, so how can customers truly benefit from it? Well, the, the good thing is now you don't have to monitor anymore. And we're coming to entertainment later on. Now this enables a whole world of new experience in the car. So you don't have to drive anymore and you have time to do something else. Maybe just relax. I mean, that's the most obvious thing. But maybe <laughs> watching a video, a podcast, or doing gaming uh, in the car, or maybe doing a video conference, and uh, you will learn later uh, how we enable that uh, embedded in the software in the car. So level three really opens up a new world of new excitement uh, and entertainment in the vehicle. That's right. So instead of using your energy and your time doing something like driving in a traffic jam, you're actually gaining back that time and being able to relax like you're saying or take care of whatever you need to take care of, texting, doing emails, whatever you need to do in your car because it's taking over for you. That is so incredible and I'm sure a lot of us cannot wait for that. But I feel as if you mentioned something before to me about how Mercedes has developed something to really eliminate a major chore of driving. So can you share that with everyone? The yeah, the parking. So, uh, of course, we're trying to take it to the next level. Uh, so what comes after level three? The driver is still in the car. So now we get the driver out of the car, and it's called level four, and we call it park pilots. So uh, what about moving into a park garage and uh, just stepping out of the car and let the car just move, even ramps up and finding its own parking space? And that's the intelligent park pilot that also we got certified in Germany as a level four system without a driver. And this really pushes the envelope and takes us to the next level. That's really incredible. Okay, so what is the story behind Park Pilot and how does that really work? How does it work? So we want to uh, make life easier, give back time and save you time. You just go to a park garage actually and leave your car, step out of the car, use your app, and then step away and the car would find its own parking space. And the same as you return, you just return back from your travels, push your app, 
let the car come to a spot uh, right in front of the parking garage and just take it over. And that's how it works and saves you time. It sounds simple the way that you're talking about the user interface, but I'm sure it's also very complex, right? Of course, there's lots of complex technology behind it. And remember, safety, safety first. Mm -hmm. And this was done with Bosch in cooperation as a great partner here. So we're using the infrastructure of Bosch into the parking garage and all the sensor set that I described before, level three sensor set that we have already available and both systems, the Bosch uh, system and the Mercedes system just work together and perform the task driverless. So I'm sure it's not something that we would set up in our own garages. It's something <laughs> that is built into the infrastructure, correct? Right, right. So that's, that's the first application, and it's always a pioneering act to get something approved by authorities, again, in a safe way, and then just a matter of rolling out globally. It's so incredible to hear that Mercedes-Benz is literally putting the pedal to the metal when it comes to level two, level three, as well as level four features yes. for drivers today. I'm so impressed. Thank you so much for that, Marcus. Um, it's been an absolute joy to hear about all of this stuff. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you have enjoyed our talk so far. So just to recap, Mercedes-Benz is working hard to bring level three automated driving to the U.S. roads. And get this, it's already available in Germany. So is the first certified level four parking system that Marcus just shared with us that was developed in conjunction with Bosch. And all of this just means more comfort and even more time that the driver can gain back. So you can focus on other tasks while your driving capabilities are not needed. So now I would like to turn to how Mercedes-Benz is using tech to create desire through customer excitement. Specifically, this means the sound experience of a Mercedes-Benz. So let's start with a video which would give you a better idea of what we're talking about. Take a look. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, so good to you know, be in the same room. Finally, you know, we worked together pre-pandemic um, on the record space Coast, coast to coast. How do you know when the mix is leading up to your creative intention? I'm always checking in cars, always in cars, right. always listening in cars. Right. It's want it to sound exactly like I want it to sound. What has to translate everywhere, right. across every format. I want people to be able to feel everything, and that comes from being able to hear everything. Mm. I just like when we drove in today with the Mercedes Benz. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything sounded warm, full. Everything sounded exactly. How can imagine you heard it when you're recording back in the yeah. day, right? What I'm trying to do is get this version of the track where if you sit down and close your eyes, you're transported somewhere. All the time that we're spending mixing these songs in that most, you can now sit into a vehicle and do that car check, just like you do you would with a stereo mix. Yeah. And you know, now you could do it with Dolby Atmos. Like cars, by their very design, sound good. There are no parallel yeah, services yeah. inside, so it's actually quite clear. <laughs> Okay, doesn't it look like those two are having way too much fun? And don't you want to be in the Mercedes-Benz with them right now, right? <laughs> and I love the fact that they're putting the Mercedes-Benz to a use that no one really thought was possible. So to speak more about that, I would love to welcome to the stage Chief Software Officer for Mercedes-Benz, Magnus Esberg. Magnus, please join us. So nice to see you. Okay, I'm so excited to hear about the sound experience of Mercedes-Benz. So what can you tell us? I know that a lot of us don't expect that a sound experience in a car can be so powerful that artists can actually use it for a sound check, or like Derek said, a car check. So can you tell me more about that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and first of all, it's great to be back here at CS, right? It's after all these three years now to have everybody here. It's amazing. So I remember when I was here the first time um, way back, uh, I was actually next to a speaker booth. But now you have here a, a complete private environment that just sounds terrific. We got 31 speakers in it and eight, um, uh, eight exciters, eight exciters in the car. And we created something that we uh, are now saying to be what something that is approved by Mercedes. So this is basically a sound experience like nothing else, right? 
Okay, so I, I'm sure a lot of us know out there when it comes to hardware in a car, we all know what a speaker is. Um, but what is an exciter exactly? Well, basically an exciter is a speaker without a frame and a cone, and we build it into basically the seats or, or other pieces of the equipment so that you're not only hearing the music, you actually feel the music. And when we're talking about the Burmeister uh, 4D system, you, we're talking about 1750 watts of, 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 of power and music coming through, so you can really, really feel an excitement uh, coming through that system. So it's like, like nothing else. Well, I can only imagine. But I mean, let's get back to the idea of great sound. That must only be part of the equation, right, when you talk about the sound within a car. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Then we need to talk about the music itself. Today, the music, of course, being streamed uh, into the devices, into our cars, of course. And this is where we need to work together to tune this music experience so that it's perfect harmony between the hardware that we talked about, the speakers, the streaming uh, services coming into it, and then, of course, the, the content itself coming into the car. Okay, that's interesting. So. Um we're going to talk a little bit about the partners because I know that you can't do this solo because music is really a collaborative effort. So can you speak a little bit about that? So if we first talk about the music uh, streaming services mm -hmm. itself, we already have today uh, music streaming services in Europe. And we're talking about Apple Music, we're talking about Amazon Music, uh -huh. we're talking about Tidal, we're talking, of course, about Spotify, and in, in, in China, QQ Music. So that's just setting the base. But we wanted to elevate it then to the next level, so we got into partnership and engagement um, it, uh, with, of course, Apple Music and uh, Universal Music Group, Dolby Labs, to create very, a truly seamless experience. And I'm, I'm proud that we at Paris announced that we are the first device, a non-Apple device, that is certified to be a spatial audio by uh, Apple Music. So, so that's really taking it to the next level. Okay, so I see that this collaborative effort, it goes beyond just hardware. And I'm sure a lot of the tech fans out here, they're probably all wondering, how are you going to pull that off on a technical level? How are you going to integrate that into all the Mercedes-Benz? Well, it's all about system integration. Uh, and I know we have some musicians here. And, and in the back, I see, see a few of them. Um, <laughs> We, we have created a, a system where we have a studio on site in Germany, in Sinilfingen, with the headquarters that we created together with the UMG, so that we can work together with professionals, uh, professional sound studio technicians, together with our engineers to, to create that kind of atmosphere, create that feeling, to get that fine tuning down so we get it just right. And I know that there are other measures that you're actually working on to make sure that that Mercedes-Benz delivers that powerful listening experience. So can you elaborate? Yeah, so if we, we talked about the in-car uh, experience with the speakers, we talked about them, the streaming music itself. Now we're coming to the presentation of the music, because music, of course, you need to find what you want. And this is this seamless integration to our, uh, our dashboards, basically our beautiful uh, hyperscreen. So the hyperscreen was announced here a few years ago at, at CES, right? So it's creating that seamless integration, creating that pipeline, mm -hmm. making sure that the integration of technology, the uh, the internet speed that we're going to have is becoming this truly amazing experience totally combined for the customer. Now, I appreciate that you just brought up streaming because I feel like that's also something that we have to dive into, right? All right. So with that, I would love to introduce with us a partner of Mercedes-Benz, an incredible thinker as well as incredible company. We have with us RJ, the founder and CEO of Zinc, a company that in their own words is turbocharging the passenger experience for cars today as well as that of autonomous driving tomorrow. RJ, hi. hi. It's so oh, cool. such a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for joining. Okay, so for those of us that may not know what Zinc is, will you explain what your company is all about? We're the first company in the world that exclusively focuses on bringing video streaming and next generation media into cars. And the reason that that's important is that the car is not the same as your living room couch. And Magnus just told us about the incredible audio system, for example. You've got a multi-sensory experience mm -hmm. created in the car. And so when you are thinking about creating video experiences and new types of media, you need to really use all senses. And that's what we do at Zinc. That's really interesting. Now, Magnus, we have a lot of tech fans out here. They're all attendants here at CES, so I'm sure that they know that they can stream content into their cars via their smartphone already. So how does Zinc play into the Mercedes-Benz experience? 
Well, if we now tie it back to what Marcus just was talking about previously, giving time backs. Now, now we have time where we're in the level, uh, level three condition, but we're also having time where we're having charging stops, or also when we're in a situation where our passenger through the hyper screen, which is it's big. <laughs> we have a situation where the passengers can view this content uh, even when the are in level two mode because it, the driver is not then able to access that content. It cannot see it. It will not actually block it out for the driver. Nice. So we have this total integration of depending on which mode you're in that you actually can consume this uh, this content that either in the in the for the entire audience or just for passengers with the complete sound experience and it creates an a holistic, uh, you know, just fun, just exciting time, right? So it's, that's what we want to give the customers. I really love that Mercedes-Benz wants to make driving more fun as well. But what you mentioned is that it's also incredibly safe, right? It's got safeguards in there. Absolutely. So what we talked about before. So the safety concepts have been approved uh, in order to be able to watch this media. So it's we're working together with authorities to make sure that they are agreeing to our concepts that we're able to prove that we're level two, level three when you're consuming this content. So impressive. Okay, so RJ, I want to ask you, why do you think that this combination is so dynamic? We have entertainment, we have conditionally automated driving, and we also have an incredible high-end charging experience. So can you tell us? Well, I mean, the hyper screen as one example is the ultimate creative canvas. And especially if you think about it, you've got a full LED, uh, you've got lighting, you've got just all these ingredients that make something so compelling. And when you think about the fact that when you have this new time in the car, um, for Zinc, we think that this just means that the most amazing cars, Mercedes-Benz, is just crying for great content. We have over 40 partners already integrated in the Zinc system for Mercedes-Benz. New partners are coming online every week, and we just think this is going to be a, a new generation of mobility that gets enabled by how you spend that time in the car. That's really incredible. And um, when you're, you actually told me a story about driving for the first time in a car and it was level three, you know, conditionally autonomous driving. So how did you feel when you first stepped into that car? What were you thinking? Well, me and my team, we spent significant time driving and testing these level two, level three systems. And, and after a while, when the system is working as good as it is right now, it actually gets boring. Yes. <laughs> because you're Let's be honest. There. Let's be honest. It can get boring in a car. <laughs> so this is where we say, well, we got to get content in there. We got to get content. We got to be able to consume things. We got to be able to, to be entertained. And of course, be productive. So we have more, more announcements to come later on on how to be productive as well. So you had mentioned earlier that level three is already available in Germany. So does that mean that zinc is already available as well? We're really excited about that because I think that's one of the things, and also as Marcus mentioned, Mercedes-Benz is so unique in that way, and we feel so lucky to be able to work with such a visionary company. When you think about that, these are the things that used to be the stuff of dreams, and now you really can use your, your time. Um, and I think in this case, what we tried to do is to also make sure that it still feels like a Mercedes-Benz experience. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that this partnership has been a really great step, and there's so much more to come. That's amazing. Okay, so just to wrap it up, a Mercedes can now serve as the ultimate soundtrack for artists, and there are collaborations with Apple Music, Universal Music Group, and Dolby, and Zinc, and they're all going to bring an entirely new digital life into the car. So RJ Magnus, thank you so much for your time and for these great announcements. Thank you, thank you. So incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, our speakers have just provided an incredible insight into the way that Mercedes-Benz is truly leveraging tech advances to make our cars even more desirable. In fact, these measures have already been implemented in Europe as of last December in the S and the C-Class models, as well as the EQS and EQE. Now, these features, they can make our lives easier in the electric age by providing a seamless, reliable, high-end charging experience. And of course, they can return to us precious time with conditionally automated driving and advanced driver assistance programs. And it can even enhance all other aspects of the in-car experience with exciting entertainment that just seamlessly connects our lives outside the car and brings us, which also brings us to our next segment, which is about a partnership with a company that bills itself as just disturbingly awesome. It's super plastic. 
This company is based in New York and is the creator of synthetic animated celebrities and digital collectibles. Now they've teamed up with Mercedes-Benz to create an icon that began its life as a dashboard ornament across the globe. You may know him, the Wackle Dackle or the Nodding Dog. I had one in my car, in my dad's car, when I was like very, very young. He's a typical automotive accessory. Who had one of these, right? You guys can all relate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and Super Plastic, an animated universe with progressive characters, Gugamon and Janky. You're not sure what I'm talking about, right? All right, well. Just check out this video. It's gonna be pretty hard to miss this incredible sculpture over here. He's involved in the video as well. He may be one of the stars. So take a look and you'll understand more about this collaboration. Dreams since like baby, I've been 24 with the lights of an AG. Jumping off the buildings used to be so stimulating. Now I'm reaching new heights. I'ma need the off-white. Play with the fire, you get burned. All of my struggles became lessons well learned. That is not they keep me drawn, it's for sure. Cause one day we were meant to have this earth. I know, that definitely is a partnership that really seems unexpected at first glance. I mean, that was such a cool joyride that went from New York City intergalactic, and you saw the happiness in the characters' faces, right? Okay, so you're probably wondering, what is Mercedes-Benz doing pairing up with an edgy global entertainment brand like Super Plastic? Is it two worlds colliding, or is it the perfect match? Well, let's dive in to find out more. So please join me in welcoming the head of brand communications for Mercedes-Benz, Alexander Health, and Chief Creative Officer for Superplastic, Galen McKamey. Gentlemen, come on up. Nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you, thanks. Thanks for joining. And look who you brought. What one? The Vackle Dackle. You all can come up and take a picture later. I know you want to. <laughs> so, Galen, Alex, I mean, tell me, who is Super Dackle or the Vackle Dackle, and how did this whole thing come about? Because it seems like they had such incredible energy finding each other in New York City and going on this adventure that I know we all are inspired to go on now. First of all, thanks a lot for that very warm welcome, Chilan. And I think, as you just said, the video is a perfect example of what disturbingly awesome can look like. And thanks, Galen and the Super Plastic crew for challenging us on that one. Yeah, that's a problem. Um, <laughs> I mean, at Mercedes, we always want to surprise and excite our customers. And I think the duo of Superplastic and Mercedes coming together is a very good one in doing so. And we are very happy to be welcoming Superduckle now, just around the corner, into the big Mercedes-Benz family. Mm -hmm. I mean, but when this came about, did you think, is it just a game of opposites attract? Like, what's happening here? I mean, uh, to, to answer you, your question, in the end, the more we talked, the more we knew that we already had the perfect character who could embody the story of our collaboration, right? So it's the classic Wackle Duckle. That nodding dog toy, in the end, it has graced uh, dashboards and warmed hearts of, of drivers all around the world, not just in Germany. Mm -hmm. And thanks to you now, we are bringing the original idea into the digital age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, th I think for us from the super plastic side, like being able to take like a, mo a classic and modernize it and kind of through the art of like really kind of disruptive storytelling and placing it into this digital landscape and universe that we kind of created within our world, bringing them in has just been a real treat and just kind of like reinterpreting what this little character really is from 1965 to 2023 mm -hmm. with regards to like where Mercedes and Super Plastic are going in 2023. So tell me, who is Superdackle? Because I know that he must embody like the soul of both brands, right? Yeah, I mean, it, this is 
it was an awesome experience for real. Like we had, you know, 20 to 30 people on Zoom calls going back and forth for months and months. And this was like, we were talking about last night at dinner. It was the quickest, most easy and painless kind of like coming together to create something really unique and dynamic. But for us, you know, we needed it to be an interpretation of the classic, but done in our design DNA with Mercedes design DNA and kind of a joint storytelling around it. So it just feels like it's kind of together and cohesive. So tell me a little bit about how you actually decided to work together, because I'm sure Mercedes-Benz has this pick of all these different companies they want to work with, and Superplastic is just known for being awesome. So you guys have your choice of brands. So how did this collaboration come about? I mean, Mercedes has always sought out creative collaborations that defy what everyone would expect of us. Okay. So with Superplastic and partnering now, we are seeking fresh impulses, especially from people and cultural pioneers who might, might not be interested in cars or the car industry overall. And those people especially should say, what? That's, that's from Mercedes officially? Yeah. That's cool. So with Superplastic, you, we are bringing the original story of the Wackle Dackel mm -hmm. to life through a, let's say, modern modern pop cultural lens and to the super plastic universe. Yeah, and for us, I mean, we, we really kind of stick to working with brands that we love mm -hmm. and trust and respect and, you know, Mercedes from design to technical storytelling to the product that comes out, it was kind of a perfect fit for kind of the elevated sense of what we're creating within our world and universe, so it's mm -hmm. been pretty symbiotic. And I got to know, because Galen, you come up with some really interesting characters. We're seeing, I mean, we saw Gugaman and Janky, and I saw other videos in their whole repertoire. A bit weird, yeah. <laughs> you know, just, just exciting guys hanging out, doing their thing. So tell me a little bit about your creative process as well as your inspiration. I mean, the, the inspiration was kind of there, and I think the inspiring part for our team was really just coming together with the Mercedes team and figuring out what that narrative is, how we're going to transform, you know, this little character into something really cute that the world can kind of, like, embrace and love. Um, so it really started with kind of the story and then went into, like, the design of it, what's it going to look like. You know, obviously we're very kind of toyetic and kind of pop culture leaning forward, so we wanted to really have a lot of that DNA in the product in the entertainment. I'm sure you're really proud of Super, Super Dackel because he's, he's awesome. He's awesome. He's awesome. He's awesome. He's awesome. <laughs> no doubt, and you're going to see a two and a half meter version of him around the corner. So Alex, I know you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but if you can tell us a little bit more, how does this truly fit into Mercedes-Benz's theme of exciting its customers? I mean, as you heard from Marcus and Magnus earlier, it's all about creating desire. And creating desire goes many ways. It can also mean creating a strong emotional bond with your customers and fans who might not be customers yet. So as Mercedes is reinventing products and services to, for a modern digital age, we thought, why shouldn't we also do a digital modern update to our classic Wackel Dackel, right? So again, we see in it a lot more than it was in the past. We see in it a lot more than a physical product. Buckle Dackel now is going to Super Dackel and entering the digital universe and I can tell you that we are bringing it, him actually, very soon into our cars in the near future. So we are looking forward to that. Oh my gosh, that's exciting. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to integrate that, but I am super, super psyched for that. All right, Alex Galen, it sounds like it is going to be a super exciting road ahead for not just Gugamon and Janky, but also for Super Dackle. And the collaboration is going to be incredible in 2023, I assume. You guys can't give anything away, can you? Can you? We will keep you posted, but right. it's just <laughs> I'm the king of late in the car, so I, I don't know. <laughs> I always have to ask, I know, what's happening in the story. Okay, and by the way, everyone, please do not forget to take your must-have photograph, the Instagram photograph, around the corner with a giant super dackle over there because he's looking so great. He's got his best clothes on just for your photograph. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank, thank you. you so much, Galen. You guys are awesome, and I love the vackle dackle. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys have been amazing. I do want to give another thank you to our incredible speakers, Marcus Schaefer, Magnus Usberg, RJ, Galen McKamey, and Alexander Help. I hope that you all have enjoyed this incredible discussion about how Mercedes-Benz is leveraging technology to truly create desire for its customers. I'm Chilan Liu, and I will see you again soon. Enjoy the rest of CES, and don't forget your picture.